So I've finally got Mark one of the relay sequencer on the wall. It's got this uh, box underneath that's got everything else that it needs to actually do something so you can just turn it on and it, it works. Good afternoon, uh, morning. I'm not sure what it is. Well, welcome to a uh, continuation of Operation Bare Minimum. Uh, <laughs> the bare minimum being the, the kind of getting the bare minimum sorted in the museum to, you know, so it's like sort of ready to open and then can build on it afterwards. But bare minimum requires, it's not just like opening with nothing working, like there needs to be quite a fair few things to keep it, keep, keep, keep people busy and stuff. And this is one of them that I decided uh, to tackle last night. And uh, the problem is, is this is great, it works, but it needs to be plugged into loads of um, things to actually be useful and a, you know, a functioning thing to use. Uh, I've got these banana jacks on the side. Uh, these are all the potentiometers. If you've seen in the video on this, uh, it's got uh, the actual potentiometers, the uh, top and the bottom of the potentiometers. They're completely independent of the whole machine, so they can be anything, like for instance, you could use this as a crossfader module for instance you can plug in an audio file there no audio file some audio there and an audio there and you can actually crossfade between them if you really wanted to or just put solid voltages like just watch the video the link is below talking about the exact functions of this absolute monstrosity but what i did yesterday was i built this thing on the bottom and um if you zoom in you can see Let's get a zoom on this. Let's get a zoom. These magic arms never want to stay solid Okay, here we go. That's that's more moody, mood lighting. Here we go. If I open this up a bit. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So this right here is just um, basically uh, in charge of everything that sort of is required on top of this to make this uh, relay sequencer work. The thing is, is this doesn't have an internal clock. It doesn't have a oscillator. It doesn't have a power switch. Uh, things like that. So it's just all of the little things to basically make make this just a happy happy camper when it's on a wall which is what it will be on a wall i've already got a place for it so um yeah so below this one uh what it has is it's got an on and off switch so you can turn it on and off this thing can be left indefinitely so if it just gets left on for like an hour or two it really doesn't matter the, these these relays have proved to be pretty solid like they i haven't had to replace anything and i've had this running for yonks and you'll see these ones down here they're going to be running even more so this is going to be a test of time don't worry all, all relays are socketed anyway so whatever so in so it's got an on and off switch it's got the power socket uh, you'll see there's a wire coming from underneath this is just for test there's actually some wago clips wago vago i don't know how you pronounce it some wago clips to actually clip on the power cable there'll be a bit of conduit you know i love conduit actually coming in the bottom of this uh, from the power uh, below so there's going to be you know like so it'll be out of out of touch, out of reach, all the power's out of reach. So the thing is, is you put this on the wall and you're able to plug in the power without having to use extra solder or something. So yeah, you can see there's some Wago clips on the back for the for the positive, for the ground and for the, you know, for the earth and whatnot. It's literally just right now for tests. It's just a bit of speaker cable. I know that's awful. Uh, also in here, we've got four big and chunky capacitors this is because uh yeah it's um it's just to smooth out the whole thing there's a lot of voltage drop when this clicks over and there's a re i'll talk about this whole uh issue and stuff in the next relay sequencer video because i am building a massive version for the uh interactive kind of bit over in the interactive there's a desk and there's a massive space for a big old relay sequencer computer so that's that's but that's not bare minimum that's going to be a little bit of time to figure that one out in here are also a couple of cop outs actually uh, there's two five 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 timer chips i know it's a bit sad it's a bit cheeky but it's just it needed to work. So what you could do to drive uh, relays like for a clock is you could actually use a motor like a, a yeah just a normal DC motor or a stepper motor and it spins around hitting a couple of switches using a cam on top of the motor. That would be a cool way of making a clock or you could even just use a couple of relays or a single relay and a capacitor but the thing is with the relay and capacitor you can't really adjust smoothly the clock time. Um, you can adjust it by changing the capacitors or having a variable trim capacitor, but I don't have a 
variable capacitors sitting around. So uh, usually with all of these things that I just bash together, it's usually what I've got sitting around just to have to save on getting random stuff. So it's got a 555 timer chip clock and that, that wires up through a hole here and it goes in to connect to the banana jacks from the back. I always forget the best uh, route on using 55 timer chips. 555 timer chips, I did breadboard a little bit, but I ended up in, I'm all, ultimately it's the same as this. So I, this is a 555 timer circuit. So all I did was search up 555 sequel to synth. And the thing is, is uh, what I did was, uh, I, I did a modification. This is the relays, so you ignore these. These are relays. So yeah, I basically just copied this. Like you could, do, there's mountains. I've, there's loads of different schematics and stuff. But I, I, I could have done. I, there's a better circuit for the clock. But I ended up building this one just because you could have. Uh, it, it made the most of the control voltage input. Uh, you remember the voltage control input of a 555 timer chip is actually backwards. So ground makes it go quicker, and of the positive voltage makes it go slower. Uh, this gives actually a very limited range of the clock's oscillations, which is really good for this because it's not gonna go too quick and it's not gonna go too slow, which is great for the museum because you don't want something to be too complicated. The people don't wanna use and they get bored of it because it's too complicated. It's like, oh, what's going on? I don't understand. It's nice to be a little bit simple. So there's a clock speed. That's, um, I'll show you how quick it goes in a sec. The potentiometers have ground on top and five volts on the bottom or whatever the voltage is going into it. And then that wires into this circuit, which is, I basically did this. However, I went for a hundred N on there. I didn't bother adding that because whatever. And that goes straight into a transistor. Oh, oh, well, I'm drawing in this wrong. Uh, we got a collector. Uh, ground, 1K, oh no, 1K, uh, there we go. And then this wires up to a relay. Uh, this is a relay and then that's the POS voltage, uh, plus five volts. And then this means that there's a relay oscillator. So there's three relays wired up to three separate transistors down here. And this is just like, well, being switched by this 55 timer. So 555 timers, so they're actually acting like an oscillator. <laughs> The great thing about the limited clock speed is it can't be too slow or it can't be too quick that it turns off. Uh, this this flip-flop right here seems to have, even from the start, been a bit temperamental. I might even rebuild this when I've got a moment because when I plug this in, sometimes, sometimes it actually turns off and it's not going to turn off now. But it always seems to turn off sometimes on this one, so it's not quite right. Come on, turn off. Oh, it's not even going to turn off now. I'm trying to make it turn off. Well, it's not turning off now. Whenever I'm watching it, it doesn't want to turn off, but when I don't want it to turn off, it turns off. So you get the idea. The uh, next version of this, the bigger one with, uh, you know, with the clock speed that'll actually be analog, everything will be analog. It, that'll be a work in progress later down the line. Uh, there's going to be an update video on that because I've actually got some circuit boards for uh, the next sequencer idea. And I'll, I'll, I'll update you on all, all of this. This is going to go up on the wall, bit of conduit, covering up the power supply. I'll let you know how that goes. But yeah, the museum's coming along quite well. There's a few more jobs before the bare minimum's done and then it's a bit of literature and then just in time for all of this crazy hoo-ha in the world, hopefully, you know, we'll be pit a out, it'll be time to open it up, which is gonna be, yeah, next month, July. Blowing fingers crossed. Anyway, subscribe if you like these kind of things and have a lovely time. Ooh, I'm gonna put this on the wall now.